challenges became increasingly clear to the government that we needed far-reaching reform. The resulting higher education and research reform package has five major themes. Expanding opportunities for students, a sustainable higher education loan program, a sustainable higher education system overall, investing in research excellence, upholding quality. The reform package takes very careful account of consultation through processes including the Lee Dow Braithwaite Review, the Kemp Norton Review and the National Commission of Audit. It draws on much discussion over many years on how to spread opportunity for students and how to ensure that Australia has the best higher education system we can. It also draws on the many informal opportunities that I've had to consult with the higher education sector both before and after I became the Minister for Education as well as the considerable interaction between my department and my office and the higher education sector. As a result of these reforms, for the first time ever, students studying at any registered higher education provider will have their place directly supported by the Australian Government. This includes higher education students at TAFEs and private education colleges. It also includes all accredited higher education diplomas and advanced diplomas, as well as associate degrees and degrees. These reforms will expand options and pathways for students less well prepared for university, while funding a wide range of qualifications that lead straight into jobs. Professor Peter Lee, the chair of the Regional Universities Network, has welcomed this, saying we are particularly pleased that the government has decided to keep the demand-driven system for bachelor places and extended it to sub-bachelor places. This will assist in providing pathways and lift participation in higher education in regional Australia for less well-prepared students. Andrew Norton from the Grattan Institute and one of the co-authors of the recent review I commissioned on the demand-driven higher education system has said, TAFEs and pathway colleges meet the needs of a wider group of people seeking higher education. Students who arrive at university via a pathway college do much better than would otherwise have been expected given their prior school results. Supporting students into diploma pathway courses will reduce dropout rates for students who enter degree courses before they are ready because places on pathway courses are currently either unavailable or more expensive. Andrew Norton went on to say, although the academic outcomes are good, in private colleges students have to pay fees that are often five to $10,000 more than they would pay at a public university. Noting that under the government's reforms, many of these students will pay much less than they do now. In addition to supporting an additional 80,000 students in these ways, we are freeing universities to determine their own fees. The level of student contributions will be determined by what universities and other higher education providers charge and by what students choose to pay. Universities and colleges will have to compete for students and when universities and colleges compete for students, students win. They win through a better range of courses offered to meet their needs, through greater focus on the quality of teaching and other support for students and on price. We will never have diversity of choices for students and the quality of courses that we need without fee deregulation. Competition between universities and colleges will help to prevent fees from rising excessively. Some fees will go up and some fees will go down. We can be confident that some will go down because for the first time ever, the Commonwealth will be supporting all students in undergraduate courses from higher education diplomas to bachelor degrees. With 80,000 students funded for the first time, some fees must go down. The new system is fair and reasonable because students gain enormous private benefit from their education and it's reasonable that they pay a fair share of the cost. The taxpayer currently pays 100% of the cost of an undergraduate's education up front and on average students only ever pay around four out of every $10 of the cost. Students are not required to make any payments up front. They take out a loan from the taxpayer through HELP and only begin to make repayments after they're earning over $50,000 a year. 
for students the decision to invest in their own future is the best investment they will ever make. Australian university graduates, on average, earn up to 75% more than those who do not go on to higher education after secondary school. Over their lifetime, graduates may earn around a million dollars more than if they had not gone to university. Higher education is worth it, and students know it. Quoting from Andrew Norton again, historical experience suggests that prospective students from low socioeconomic backgrounds are not generally put off by higher charges if income contingent loans are available. No current undergraduate students will be impacted by changes to student contributions. They'll be grandfathered, supported on the current terms until they cease their current studies or until the end of 2020, whichever is earlier. Our package of reform has a very strong focus on equity. Higher education students will continue to be supported by Australia's world-renowned higher education loan program. Those loans ensure that students do not face upfront costs and do not repay until they are earning a decent living. As I said, no student needs to pay a dollar upfront. For the first time, apprentices will also have access to income contingent loans to encourage more young people to take up a trade and complete their qualification. This is through the government's new HEX-style trade support loan program. We are also eliminating loan fees that apply when students borrow to study under the VET fee help and fee help schemes. This will mean students can borrow on the same terms as each other rather than the current unfair inequities that exist between the private and public sector. The government did not accept the recommendation of the National Commission of Audit to reduce the thresholds for repayment to the level of the minimum wage. We believe that students should only repay their loan from the taxpayer once they are earning well above the minimum wage. A new repayment threshold of 50,638 will apply from the 1st of July 2016. And at that level, graduates would only have to pay 2% of their income in repayment of their loans. Students from disadvantaged backgrounds will have access to the largest Commonwealth scholarship scheme ever. Higher education institutions will be required to allocate one in every five dollars of additional revenue they raise from student contributions to a new Commonwealth scholarship scheme. Students will receive individual tailored support from their higher education provider through the new Commonwealth scholarship scheme. This will include needs-based scholarships to help meet costs of living, as well as fee exemptions, mentoring, tutorial support, and other assistance at critical points of their study. This will help many students from regional Australia and outer metropolitan areas, many Indigenous students, low SES, and others who are first in their family to access and complete higher education qualifications. The scholarships will allow the best students to get the best university education that is right for them. This is in addition to the extra support being provided by extending the demand-driven system to students studying diploma, advanced diploma and associate degree courses so that they can access a pathway to a bachelor degree or a qualification that leads directly to a job. Additionally, the Higher Education Participation Program, HEP, helps disadvantaged students by funding universities to undertake activities that improve access to higher education for people from low socioeconomic status backgrounds. It also supports disadvantaged students to remain in their course and complete their qualification. The new Commonwealth scholarships will provide a very significant boost to resources for these activities. The reforms will allow universities and higher education providers to compete more effectively for students. As a result, students will have a more choice and universities and colleges will need to put more effort into meeting the needs of students. They will need to become more innovative and continuously improve the teaching and learning they offer in order to attract students. The demand-driven system of undergraduate places has greatly increased access to university undergraduate degrees for Australian students, and this is something we applaud. But it needs to be financially sustainable. Uncapped student places are now estimated to cost an additional $7.6 billion over the five years from 2013-14. Given our national budget challenges, it's essential that the higher education system remains 
on a strong and sustainable financial footing. And this means there were some budget measures that resulted in education reductions in funding, ending programs that don't work or requiring additional contributions. But the overall spending on higher education rose by $900 million over the next four years. As part of a government-wide decision to streamline and simplify indexation for programs, payments to higher education providers will be increased with inflation using the CPI from the 1st of January 2016. Also, universities will be able to charge research training scheme students undertaking higher degree by research courses a contribu contribution towards the cost of their degree. I'm very pleased that the budget includes an ongoing investment in essential research programs. Research addresses the world's most pressing problems and challenges being faced by mankind. Research in Australia helps our successful businesses grow and increase their earnings and boosts Australia's overseas exports. It helps ensure that we keep jobs in Australia. World-class research requires high-quality facilities and talented researchers, yet the previous government left us with a situation where there was not a single dollar set aside for the National Collaborative Research Infrastructure Strategy beyond the 30th of June next year. And there was no provision for any new awards for the Future Fellowships Program that supports mid-career researchers to undertake world-class research in Australia. So we will provide $150 million in 2015-16 for the continuation of the NCRIS. This investment is supported by the findings of the National Commission of Audit that quality research infrastructure is a critical component of Australia's research and development system. A review of that strategy will commence in the near future, which responds to the Commission's recommendations that the government commit to ongoing funding for critical research infrastructure informed by a reassessment of existing research infrastructure provision and requirements. The government will also fund 100 outstanding mid-career researchers every year through the Future Fellowship Scheme. These researchers will each receive funding for four years to undertake their vital research. This will reduce the risk of brain drain where our best researchers can leave Australia for jobs overseas. It will contribute to maintaining Australia's long-standing re reputation for producing world-class research. The Future Fellowships Program will be an ongoing program and $140 million has been provided for this over the next four years. The budget also delivers on our election commitments to direct research resources to key national priorities. Australian Research Council funding has been reprioritised, including $26 million to accelerate research into dementia as part of a larger $200 million government initiative on dementia. $42 million to expand